was born right here in this community and I grew up to observe a whole lot of things that we are happening in this community. Before OEM, I knew exactly how we've been living here because I grew up here and life was beautiful then. My father is a fisherman. We all stay, my mother, just put the banga in the fire. I'm coming back. We just run the backyard. Before you will see, we just start with fish. This is the Niger Delta, a place rich with so much mangrove, swamps, oil, gas. It's a place that is so rich with resources that you will want to be jealous of. It's a place where every developer, every company wants to reside because they have life so easy. No wonder so many oil companies have come in to tap up the resources of the Niger Delta in Nigeria. Sometimes I see many, many vehicles come with clay pan. We are as a company are coming on. They want to open company in our land. So everybody was happy, all the father were happy. They came, they will give, we see quite mad with Shingon. Give me the children, we'll be happy, Shingon. We're happy that good things are coming. That was our aspiration, that was our hope. And so there is oil exploration that comes in different parts of the Niger Delta. But this doesn't come without a price to communities where this oil resides. By 1993, Ogoni has contributed over $300 billion to the Nigerian state through its oil. The prize should be bountiful, actually. It should be something of celebration to such communities. But the story I'm about to tell you is about the tragic price that communities have to pay in the Niger Delta for oil exploration by international oil companies. Welcome to the Niger Delta, a place that should be a place of riches, but has become a place of tragedy. Mainly my work for fishing, that is uh, I do farming and uh, fishing, precisely. I grew up to know our environment to be very clean. I saw sea lives and how the environment used to look like. So it shouldn't be less than um, 15 years when these things have been up. Because of the oil exploration, the crops that we are planting, I am a farmer. We do not do well again as before. We don't have a very good harvest again as the olden days because they are exploiting those oils. All those things, God know why he kept it on the soil like that. I grow cassava and plantain. Well, before, when you plant plantain, your plantain come out bulky and very fine. But now if you plant plantain, your plantain come out very, it's not bulky and it's not fine to look at. The food, the product is not healthy. It's looking sick, like when someone is sick that is malnourished. A bush of plantain, look at what I plant. For eight months now, see, see, what, see what it brought to me. See what it brought to me. Not even, it's, not, it's not even up to, 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 for, for a human being to even eat. Before, if you have this cassava, cassava is so come out looking good. Some look like yams, big tubers of yam. But now, if you have this cassava, sometimes you might not even get any fruit. You might not get any products. Animals themselves, like before we breed, this thing, we need to see again. Even our crops themselves, they, they die finish because of the gas. This oil spread don't kill our crops. Then. Even plantain cell, no fish. I'm 
and come on, 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 and no matter what you plant, it does not come out the way as you are expecting it to come out. The exploitation of the oil resources have damaged the land, and access to clean water is no longer possible. And if you look at the UNEP report that was produced, that classically documented the evidence how the Ogoni area and the United Delta has been destroyed, that gives you a sense of where we are going. And you also realize that the people of the region are living in abject poverty. Infrastructure is at near zero within the region in most locations. Even the flaring of gas, the flare that gas in very close proximity to human habitation. And when gas is flared that way, it's in the soot, soot that falls in the form of axi rain also has a devastating effect on the health, the skin, the land, river, and everything. It has caused us a lot of um, diseases that is even unnamed. We don't know where it's coming from. Younger ones are dying. Last Saturday, we buried one of our, our brother uh, by name, Kenneth. And you know, we couldn't even tell what killed him. But if you live here and go to some fishing camps, even in Twelve Billion, I used to go there. I went there the first day. The people are sick. Children are sick. The aged, they are sick. I used to buy my drugs from a uh, zip line. So they said I should come, please come with your drugs. But right now I don't have transport to go there. But the people are sick because of these very oil spillages. Even when we are coming, I saw the water was oily. So it's disturbing people. Like here now, this is our main point where we are. Sometimes we drink the water, but now we cannot use it again because of the, the, the crude and other things. We have malaria, fever. Fever is malaria, yes. Then maybe stooling, vomiting, pulse. They complained. Why some of them still they bath here? Because they don't have where to bath, and they, they don't have because they have to manage the one they see. If you take statistics of the communities now, from five to six, seven, eight, nine, 38 years, we have what we call constant coughing. And we decided to find out what is the cost of this thing. Because we, we have this person, for example, saying, John, what did happen to you? I'm having a call for. Then you see uh, uh, maybe uh, James tomorrow. And you see, uh, James, what is the problem? You say, I'm having a call for. So we decided to find out what is the cost of this call. They said the flare is contributing to what is giving some of us the cough. Nowadays, we have a lot of people blind. As I'm talking with you, one of my eyes is being affected. My right eye. And when you wake up in the morning also, maybe you don't have good ventilation. Maybe you, you sleep outside. By the time you wake up in the morning, check your nose. You also see those black spots or those black particles. And when you breathe them in, you know what it means. It will affect the system, the lungs, the liver. Many of them, not even age, even young people, young boys suffering from kidney problem, liver problem, lungs problem, and so many, even when they go for tests. We used to scratch, get scratching, but we just take antibiotics and uh, other creams to battle it. We don't know how it comes about. It's part of the, the oil issues we are talking about. We have got a little bit of We have a little bit of a We have got a little bit of a We have got a little bit of a We have got Go to some of the houses, you will see crack of wall. Because if you see this flare now, if you go towards this heading, after the break, after the bridge now, you will see this, there is two flare there. Those two flare, sometimes when they vibrate, you cannot stay inside your house and it causes a lot of crack in the building. Even our roof. It makes us to spend a lot of money in our roof. In those days, we, when our fathers built our home, the roof lasted for a very long time. But now, 
you can use the most expensive camera lens, it doesn't last. You see you, people rebuilding again, removing their rooftop and start using zinc again. Whereas the people you build your ass with the same time in other places, the people are doing well there. The brand just broke into pieces in the dust bins. Just opened and water came out. And second one, the second one happened, the gas just burned all the bush. The bush are close to the environment. And I do as it still happen that the one that I witnessed, those that went to go and dry tapioca, even some of their loads got burned. Even some of their sustained injury during the behind of the gas pain. And they took them to the hospital. And who, who third one, I remember the one that even bust. And at the end of the day, who living, because there are some people that live close to them, you still affect them too. And sometimes we see we just hear boom. And sometimes we just hear they get fire, we just goes high, everywhere will be just this, there's uh, light all over the places. Everywhere we will be afraid. So we some of them will run. And so we see here is job making unnecessary noise. And the oil company is not doing anything to stop the flaring. They never even want to come tell us you know, what happened to all these things. How people are feeling. How about on ahead? And we will start. We don't know how to approach them. It's so shocking to know that the Karama is host to Ajip, that's the Nigerian Ajip Oil Company and the Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria. But as of today, none of its son or daughter are engaged as staff of this company. It was just recently, about two years ago, that one of our sons were employed as a contract staff. That is not even a staff of Ajip. And today you are aware of what is happening in Ajip. It has been sold to Andu and we don't know the fit. Even the one, the only one person that even really did. The impact of climate change is now, as you know, is devastating. And it is the frontline communities that are bearing the brunt, are feeling the, the impact more than those who are making profit from the oil, crude oil trade. So we realize that. There is even global concern on the need to, re to reduce carbon emission, and that will stem from also reducing oil extraction, exploration, and use, so as to keep the earth in safe state. Otherwise, if we continue the way we are moving now, in the next 10, 20 years, we may all be no longer existing. Over 50 years at the, the, the company, the pipeline, they have not changed it. So the thing has rust and the thing burst on its own. Just recently, 2019, during the flood, when the flood was high, we there was a spill at the other oversight pipeline. When the spill occurred, we called Shell to come and the water was up to this stage. It was then. But at the end, Shell said that spill was supported. Meanwhile, where the spill happened, they, they dug, they don't, when, they, when the water dried, they come, they don't even see where somebody dug, because the pipe is under the ground. They dig inside the ground. You don't see anything. There was no way people dig that place, but they turn it supported. And me, I was them and I was having one hand drawing phone. I go down water, they dug the place with their machine. I go down and snap it just six o'clock point. How can a man, go to the water and dig with least six feet and go under and go six, uh, six o'clock level. They went and meet some boys in, the, in this community that used to chop those bribe money from them, give them some little token and sign it for them that they support. In Karama uh, and other places, we have investigated and discovered that the oil company staff are also sponsoring some of these local boys to bust the pipes. And part of the industry regulation is that once it is sabotage, 
the company, the, the community has no right to either even recommend contractor or even a say on how they go about it. So the company will now recommend contractors and do it. So when these field workers of the oil company sponsor these bills, they will now sublet, they will get the contract for cleanup, sublet it to some of these boys, <clears throat> the community boys that they use in busting the pipes. One wrong step will determine another. When they are coming in, they are not doing the right thing, so they look for, they look for vocal voices in the environment where they are operating and take them on their side because they know at initial that they will be doing the wrong things. Yeah, several complaints have been made, letters have been written even to government, oil companies, security uh, apparatus to aid the environment. Nothing much, no difference. We, we still suffer, in fact, it's degenerating more. We came to understand that the a lot was going wrong. Number one, in the area of environmental degradation, we realized that some persons within the oil firms were collaborating with our youths to cause vandalism. And when we got to know that, we wrote letters to the multinational companies of our findings. And we made suggestions. At that point, oil pollution became a business in this community. And as you know, Nigeria is a poster child of oil costs. You know, instead of the oil becoming a blessing for the country, it, when you visit the Niger Delta, you shed tears. And this is painful. And so you can imagine that um, the responsibility of the citizens to continue to look for a platform to share a view that will help challenge this injustice, whether environmental pollution, loss of livelihood, destroyed environment. Niger Delta is a, a clear case for it. I know much as I blame the IOCs, but I blame our people more because it is the rat in the house. I go to invite the rat outside that there is a fish in the house. Government will only come and promises that do everything. Uh -huh. we, we really hope on the NGOs. That is people that can help us. We generally, as activists, has is to campaign, is to, is to go to the communities, feel the pulse, get to hear what they are suffering, and try to change policy that relates to that particular specific area that we're interested in. In us, as environmental rights action, we are, we are um, interested in sustainable environment. Sometimes community will call that this thing is happening, or like this, like this. I will call straight, and they will tell me, Maurice, our uh, people are on the way. Thank you very much for the information. And that's how I, I worked some time, uh, maybe it's about some four or five years or so with Ajib, not Shell. Shell will always blame you, always look for a way out and all of that. Now, Shell sent us a statement about their subsidiary in Nigeria saying it operates to the same technical standards as other Shell companies. It continues, illegal actions by third parties cause the vast majority of oil spills in the Niger Delta, such as crude oil theft and sabotage. However, regardless of the cause, the joint venture responds quickly to clean up when spills originate from its facilities. And so our target mostly is to take this information into the global world and find people who are interested and get them to try to solve the problem. In fact, it's pushing them to site. Sometimes they, even before we know, they also want to make sure they get to site and do something before we get there so that we don't come and shout and uh, get them embarrassed again. We name and shame them. That's one uh, artist we use. But if we continue like this, suffering like this, while we have what is sustaining Nigeria with electricity to the extent we are even giving Ghana, supplying Ghana, there was a time they did what's called West Africa Gas Project Pipeline. They fixed all the pipes to the gas plant here to give West Africa countries gas. And here in our community, we don't even have lights. The light that we can get is from the flare side. In the night, we see flare side, there's light from that end. That is the light we are having that is lighting our community, not even electricity. To reclaim our environment, you've seen how it's been dilapidated. First of all, to start with, we need to do cleanup. We have to do thorough cleanup and deliberate 
um, infusing of those natural habitats that we used to have. Possibly we can even plant mangroves. We're also saying that the entire natural data that is heavily polluted should be assessed. There should be an environmental audit of the entire Niger Delta. And those areas that are heavily polluted, uh, clean up, reclamation, and remedial activities should continue immediately to save, further save the land from uh, further environmental destruction and damage. I want to see a road that you have built, apart from the small snaky track that your truck passes. I want to see your website telling me these are the number of scholarships we have given to people. You know, don't tell us to come and say this. Let us see a community. Let it be a tourist attraction that this is the community. or company, they were here and they did it. Nigeria needs to protect our citizens. Nigeria needs to give confidence back to the people and to know that the people, the citizens, are the owners of, of government. They are the employers of those who are in government to protect their rights and ensure their happiness and well-being. Your company should stop flaring the gas and find an alternative. There are things the government need to put in place, not just come to this area and exploit with their GMOUs and all the rest. They give little back to the community and take all. And then there is no involvement, formal involvement of our people in their operations. And then other ways that we can use like modular refinery that we've been crying out to government to establish. They've not done anything. Rather, they're keeping deaf ears. This modular refinery will go a long way to solve some of the features. And we are convinced that if this company go invest, we see the United States, they will uh, turn around and they will agree with us that the people have suffered so much. And the time now that we need action on climate, we need climate justice. And that's what we are pursuing. We hope that um, with an edge, we've seen the need to build more reality force to challenge this injustice. And we're very happy that um, in the last two years, we've established now a new platform that provides a voice for the people, which is the People's AGM. And through the People's AGM, we were able to start a global campaign to ask investors to visit because investors who invest in Shell, Chevron, Tezaco, all these oil companies that are exploiting the natural resources that led to the degradation of the environment need to know that they are complicit in the environmental pollution in the Niger Delta. And we're happy that we did a campaign against the uh, Church of England, and we're happy today that the Church of England has pulled out of Shell. And now, in the next few weeks, we'll be visiting Norway. We're also going to be targeting the Norwegian oil fund. And what the purpose of our visit to Norway, this Niger Delta delegation, is to raise the consciousness and raise an awareness that after 10 years that the Norwegian OEA Fund gave to share to see if they would be able to address the environmental and damage they've done to the Niger Delta, nothing has happened. We are trying to amend the Nostra Establishment uh, Act to give them more powers to put uh, punitive measures in place for the oil companies that are responsible for the oil spillage that is going on in Nigeria. We need to have a stronger legal framework in place to protect uh, the environment from oil spills. We are demanding climate justice, and when do we want it? We want it now. The only way forward for the region is to continue to raise the consciousness of the people to resist environmental injustice in the United States.